For this pattern, I have used Sirdar Alpine Lux Fur Effect yarn and a 10 millimeter crochet hook. However, for this tutorial, I'm going to use a different yarn and a smaller hook just because this yarn is very hard to demonstrate with and you won't be able to see the stitches very well. So I am going to talk to you about how you can use this yarn and how to make it a little bit easier to find where your stitches are. However, I will be using this for the actual pattern itself. I will leave a link in the description box to the blog post where it will give you all the information about the yarn and the amount of yarn that you will need for your project. You will find the free written pattern on there as well. You'll also find the low cost PDF pattern available and that will give you all the instructions plus additional if you want to make your tree skirt a little bit bigger. So go ahead and check that out in the description box. As always, if you like my videos, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell button to be notified of when my videos go live. Also give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below the video. Okay, so let's get started. I'm first of all going to talk about this yarn and what my tips are for using it. Okay, so here is the yarn. It is absolutely beautiful. It's really nice to work with as well. This particular yarn is quite cost effective as well. Some of the yarns similar to this are slightly more expensive. What you're going to have to do when you use this yarn is rely on your sense of touch a little bit more. You're going to be using your fingertips to feel the actual stitches. So it is really beneficial to be aware of your stitches um, and what a stitch might feel like so that you know what you are feeling for. So if you're not 100% confident with your skill level, I might suggest that you use another yarn just to practice with to begin with so that you can see your stitches a bit more and then move on to this. So we're going to go ahead and create our slip knot in exactly the same way as we would do before and insert the hook. So what we're going to be feeling for as we're doing the stitches is this strand that runs throughout the whole of the yarn which the faux fur is attached to. So you're just going to do your chain as normal. So yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through. You really need to be conscious of your tension. You don't want to be too tight with this yarn at all. Um, so if you feel that you have tight tension, I would go up a size or two with your crochet hook. So you're going to yarn over and pull through and you can just see that the yarn kind of disappears you can't really see what you're doing so you have to rely on your sense of touch so if i go up here i can feel a chain just here then i can feel another chain and another one and another one and that's what you really want to be feeling for is your chains now throughout this pattern we're going to be doing a treble crochet it's just the stitch that i found that worked best with this yarn for this particular pattern um, and for the very first stitch, you're going to be working into the third chain from the hook. So you can see this is the fur, that's the chain that's on the hook. You can feel down and feel another chain, another chain, and then another chain. I know this is super hard to show you on camera, but if you are working along with me, you will know exactly what I mean. So you're going to go yarn over, feel for that chain and insert your hook yarn over and pull through, you'll have those three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So you have your first stitch. Now, when you're feeling for your stitches, you can pull it apart, so you can see that the chain two is just there, and then the first treble is just here. I'm just going to go ahead and do those last few trebles, just so that I can show you how to feel for the next stitches when you come to do the next row. But remember, I'm going to come back a little bit later in the video to show you the actual stitches needed for the skirt. So I've now done those stitches and you can probably see why I'm not going to be demonstrating the pattern with this yarn because it just all blends in together, which is exactly what we want it to do, uh, but it just makes it hard to demonstrate with. So let's imagine we're now on our second row. So I'll chain two and turn. And now we want to work into the tops of these stitches. So if I just pull the work apart, you can see that this is one stitch, another stitch, another stitch, and another stitch. What we want to do is find that next stitch along 
move your fingers up to the top, you will feel the top of the stitch just here. And that is exactly where we want to work into with our treble crochet. So you're really using your fingertips to feel where that next stitch is. So find the post of the stitch, move up to the top and go into that top, the top of that stitch and do your treble. So again, into the next one. Now you'll have to work into the chain at the end of your row. So you find that very last stitch or chain here and then you can feel the chains and you go into that top loop of the chain. So it's really just a matter of practicing. You might just want to do a little swatch like this before you get going. But once you start being familiar with what you're feeling for, it's definitely a lot easier and it's actually a really, really lovely yarn to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my other yarn now so that I can start to demonstrate the first few rows of the pattern and you can get on your way to making your tree skirt. So to begin this pattern, you're going to start with a foundation chain and you're going to do a chain of 30 and then add two at the end. So that's yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through. Go ahead, pause the video, work those 30 chains plus an additional two and then meet me back once you're ready. So once you've done your chain of 32, we're then going to work back along the chain for our first round. Now we will be working in the round, however, we won't be joining our rounds. We're going to be working back and forth. So for this first round, we're going to do a treble crochet into the third chain from the hook. So not the one that's on the hook, one, two, and into the third. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. Now it's important to note here that this chain two that we did counts as a stitch here and throughout. So now we're going to do a pattern repeat and we're going to treble crochet into the next two stitches. So treble crochet and treble crochet followed by two trebles into the next stitch. So two trebles into the same stitch. And this is the pattern repeat that we're going to do all the way around. So that's one and then the second one into the same space. So it's treble crochet, treble crochet, two treble crochets into the next stitch. One and two. So you're going to do that all the way along your chain until you have two stitches remaining. So just keep going with the pattern repeat and at the end of your last repeat, you'll have two stitches remaining. So pause the video, repeat that pattern and meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so I've just worked my way around. Now my work is curling because I probably should have gone up a hook size, but it doesn't really matter for this demonstration. If you, however, are finding that your work is curling, then you definitely need to go up a hook size because your tension will be too tight. So you'll find that you have your last two stitches remaining and you're just going to do one treble crochet into each of those two stitches. So we've now completed round one. You'll find that it has like a bit of a horseshoe effect, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to go on and move on to round two. So we're going to chain two, one and two, and turn our work. And remember that that chain two classes as a stitch. So we won't be working into the base of that stitch. We'll be working into the next stitch. So first of all, for this round, we're going to do a treble crochet and a treble crochet, followed by two treble crochets into the next stitch. One and two. 
We're then going to move on to our pattern repeats. And this time, instead of doing two treble crochets followed by two trebles in the same stitch, we're going to do three treble crochets. So treble crochet, treble crochet, another treble, followed by two treble crochets into the next stitch. One and two. So you're going to go ahead and repeat that all the way round. You'll find that you will finish in the very last stitch with your two treble crochets. So it's just three treble crochets followed by two treble crochets into the next stitch all the way round to your very last stitch. So pause the video, work those stitches and meet me back in just a moment. So I've now come to the end of this last row and I just wanted to show here because it looks like I've gone into the last stitch but I've only just done the first part of my repeat. So I've done one, two, three treble crochets. The last two trebles actually go into the turning chain from the previous row. <clears throat> so go ahead and make sure that you're getting those stitches into that very last stitch. And then you're ready to move on to row three. And again, you can see it's starting to take shape. So for row three, we're going to chain two and turn our work. That chain two classes as a stitch. And then we're going to do three trebles followed by two double crochets into the next stitch to begin with. So one, two, and three followed by two double crochets. So the instructions for the first part of this pattern is going to be slightly different just because we have the chain two, but because that counts as a stitch, we are essentially still making the same pattern repeat for that row. So for the pattern repeat for this row, it's going to be one treble crochet into the next four stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. So that's one, two, three, and four, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch, one and two. So you're going to repeat that all the way round and each row is pretty much going to be the same, but you're adding an extra stitch into the pattern repeat as you grow your project. So make sure that you go ahead and look at the pattern so that you can keep track of how many stitches are in each row. But hopefully by now you should be used to doing those pattern repeats and that will assist you on the upcoming rows. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to do the attachments so that you can tie your tree skirt together. It's really simple, but I'll just show you where to put your stitches. So you want to take approximately 48 inches of yarn. You can do it longer if you want your attachments to be longer and you want to fold it over so that you have your two open ends on one side and then the folded end on the other. You're then going to take your hook and you're going to pop that in to the side of your tree skirt and you can do this evenly across. You want to do one on row one and then one on your final row and then evenly in between. So you're going to pop your hook in and pull it through for a slip stitch. And then you're just going to go ahead and chain using both strands of your yarn. So yarn over and pull through, and you're just going to do this all the way up until you get to the end of your length of yarn. So you'll probably get about 10 chains out of uh, that length of yarn. Once you have finished, you want to pull that out and you can go ahead and tie that off. Now I experimented two ways with um, sewing these ends in. I actually pulled it through the attachment, but I found that it was too bulky. And actually the best way that I found was to put a good few knots into the end 
and then just snip off the end of yarn. Now I know that some people won't feel completely comfortable with that, so you find a way that works best for you, but I just found that that actually um, disguised it much more than sewing it back into the attachment. So you would go ahead and do that on the opposite side and then you can use those to tie together to secure your tree skirt in place. So there we go, that is the Alpine tree skirt tutorial. I really hope that you have enjoyed it. Don't forget, I'll leave a link in the description box below to the blog post with all the information that you need to go along with this project, including the low cost PDF pattern for those who prefer to have their patterns to hand or if you want to make your tree skirt a little bit bigger this is the smaller version i also have the medium and large instructions on the pdf pattern so thank you so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section i would also love it if you tagged me in your photos at bella coco on instagram also use hashtag bella coco crochet so that i can see your makes thank you so much for watching and i shall see you again next time Bye.